Hello and welcome to The Average Photoshopper and episode number four, where today we look at how you can blur the background in your photos. Hello, welcome to episode number four of the Average Photoshopper tutorials. And in today's episode, we are going to be looking how you can blur the background in your images. So in particular, this is very good for portraits, um, pet or people. And also if you've got a particular subject, you want to blur out the background as if you shot on a very expensive wide aperture lens. Um, so this is Bryn, my dog, um, in the garden looking very cute um, and inquisitive so what we want to do is we want to blow this background out so it is already blurry um, but I want to get that so it's proper blown out so it's like an f 1.8 or 1.4 lens that it was shot in. I think this was 2.8 I believe so first thing we need to do is we need to duplicate the background layer actually we'll keep the name as is and then what we need to do is we need to select the subject in this case Bryn so we're going to go on to the object selection tool and we're going to have the lasso option selected so you can have lasso or rectangle so I'm going to go with lasso and we're just going to roughly draw around Bryn fairly roughly Bringing it across, and then now what? Face uh, what? Facebook. Now what? Photoshop will try and do is to um, guess what subject you're wanting to do, and that's done a uh, a fairly good job actually. But I've just noticed here on the collar. So if you press the Shift key, hold the Shift key down, and then just use the, the tool again, and that will tell tell Photoshop that you want to include something else. So we'll just let that think about it. And as you can see, that has included that, but it's also included some of the background as well. So we need to do a bit more work. So we'll go to select a mask. And what this will now do is it will bring us into the select a mask and where you can use the brush tools on the left hand side here just to fine refine the edges. And um, I can just see around his ears, etc. So let's zoom in. And as you can see there, it's not included that part of his ear. So we'll go with the solid brush tool to start with. And we'll just use a fairly big brush tool. And we're just going to go around the main parts and then if we use the refine brush edge slightly smaller um, just a tip as well if you want to increase the size of your brush press and hold the alt or option key on the Mac alt on the PC press and hold that right mouse click and then you can drag left and right to make the brush as big and small as you want up and down to select the softness so you can go from very soft to a hard brush so we'll just do about there and we'll just bring the brush size down we are on the plus because we want to add and we're just going to start brushing around the edges here and we'll just go up here as well so obviously we want to include all of this in here and what you find if that is too red if you go to the hard brush edge and just use that as well for the solid parts that you know that you want to include in to keep and then I just tend to go between the different brushes as I'm going around the subject okay so we have our selection um, quite happy with that so what we're going to want to do is we want to output to a new layer with layer mask click on OK and that will now create a new layer with the layer mask. So if I turn off that, then this is the layer mask we have. So let's turn on the uh, the background. And actually we'll turn off the background and we'll go to the background copy. We'll select that. And now what we need to do is we want to content aware edit and content aware move um, the subject out of the image. So we'll use the, the lasso tool again. So we're just going to use the lasso tool just to go around the edges of Bryn. That's the content that we want to content aware fill out. There we go. So then we go to edit content aware fill. And we allow Photoshop to um, do what it does very well indeed. That's actually done not a bad, a bad job of that. So we'll click on apply. 
and then if I take off the layer mask as you can see control and D to unselect the selection it does pretty much a pretty good job actually of taking the, the subject okay so now we've got rid of the subject we're going to go to filter blur and then we're going to go to lens blur and then when it, within here you can select the shapes so if you've got any particular bokeh bokeh um, you can select the shape that you want to have in there as well but we won't concentrate on that today we're just going to increase the radius slightly um, and we're just going to use that i'm just going to do that a little bit more okay so i quite like the look of that uh, we'll go with that option and then i'm quite happy with that blur so we'll click ok and that will now add the blur onto the background layer if we now put brim back in as you can see there that looks like the background has been completely blown out so we're going to crop the image just to get rid of some of the background on there get that eye level and click OK and there you go so let me just turn off the original layer so that is the original layer and now with the background added so that's without the blur and that's with the blur. now the next option you can do as well as if you want is you can add your camera raw pre uh, presets into this image within Photoshop as well. So in order to do that, I will merge the layers. And I'm just going to duplicate the layer. And we'll just call that Camera Raw Filters. We then go to Filter, Convert to Smart, or sorry, Convert for Smart Filters. And once that's done, you'll notice in the bottom right hand corner of the preview, you get the little um, bit of paper. It looks like a bit of paper. Um, okay, okay, so now, now we've, we've got, got that converted, converted to a smart layer. layer. We're, we're just going to go back, back to filter. filter. And we're going, going to go to, to camera raw filter. And we are going to select game day. It's one of my favorite presets I've got. I'll we'll click OK. okay. And then we're just going to go and duplicate that layer. And because we've duplicated it as a camera raw filter, smart filter layer, it's already added those in there. So you can double click on the camera raw filter. That will take you back into camera raw. Go back to presets. And then we're just going to scroll down and we're going to select the heart perp option. Click on OK. And now what we're going to do, we're just going to change the opacity of that down. OK, so we've just changed the opacity slightly on there, down to about 64%. So at 100, it um, doesn't quite look right. So I'm just going to bring it down, as I say, we're about 64%. Just wanted to give that little tinge of colour here on the left hand side. Um, and it's just added a nice bit of definition into there. That's the game day raw filter. So let's go back to the original. So this is the original image. This is with the blur background. And then this is with adding the different layers using the camera raw filter. Uh, I've done a video of the camera raw filter. I'll link that up there. Uh, so, so you, you can, can see that, that as well, it goes into a little bit more detail. detail. So there you go, so, so that's uh, how you can blur the background in pretty much any photo you have. It works best when you've got a single subject or two subjects uh, that are close to the camera. Um, it doesn't work quite so well, so well if, you, if the subject is in the middle of the picture. So you want to have a portrait or a product photography, something like that. But it does work really well. So I hope you found that useful. That was episode number four of the Average Photoshop. We've got more coming up very very soon and also if you're watching this when it goes out um, i have just launched a brand new podcast called the as yet unnamed podcast 
Um, we've got some really interesting people that I have a discussion with. And you can find that in the links below. Uh, there is a video version of it as well if you want to watch it, watch the interview, or you can listen to the uh, podcast on all the main platforms, so Apple, Google, Spotify, etc., etc. All the details are in the link below, so please do go and check that out. They're really interesting conversations, and I'm not just saying that. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with them. So, as I said, thank you for watching The Average Photo Shopper. I have been Ian HRP, and until the next video on this channel, click like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.